Hello and welcome to the third and final video of the FP2 chapter First Order Differential Equations. On the screen is a starter to review the exact differential equation method and integrating factors. So if we have a look at this, we can see that this does not differentiate to give 2 sine x. It's close, but it's not the same. So we're going to need to put this in the form dy by dx plus py equals q, where p and q are functions of x. To do that, divide everything by cos x, and we get dy by dx plus 2y sine over cos is tan x equals cos to the power 4x divided by cos x is cos power 3x. Now our integrating factor we said was equal to e to the integral of the p function, so that's 2 tan x in this case, dx. We integrate tan x, we get log of sec x. Log rules means I can write that as sec squared x inside the logarithm, and then that simplifies to sec squared x for our integrating factor. Then we need to multiply this equation here by that, and that gives us sec squared x dy by dx plus 2y tan x sec squared x and two of them cancel over here which takes us all the way down to cos x and all of that work was to create an exact differential equation so that this side on the left here can be written as the derivative with respect to x of y sec squared x and the right hand side is still cos x so that when we integrate both sides with respect to x, the left is really easy, we get y sec squared x. And on the right, we get sine x plus c. Remember, the plus c needs to come in at this point. So when I rearrange, y is equal to sine x cos squared x. The cos squared is also on the constant. And this is the final answer. In this video, we're going to solve reducible first order differential equations by using a substitution. Quickly summarizing what we've had so far, we did separating the variables. If you can separate them, you should. That's probably the easiest way. Then the exact differential equation method, which we just did in the starter question. But there may be times when you can't separate the variables and you also can't put it into this form. Or maybe you can put it in this form, but it's just going to be easier not to. In this case, if we have a substitution, we can reduce this equation to an easier equation, which we can then work with. So reducible equations. So some equations are complicated enough that using a substitution first just makes it easier. For example, use the substitution y equals xz to solve this equation here. So on a question like this, you will be given the substitution to use. From there, we're going to use the same method each time. We're going to substitute y, but we also need to substitute dy by dx. So the first thing to do here is to differentiate the substitution you've been given to get an expression for dy by dx. When you've done that, substitute both the y expression and the dy by dx expression to get rid of the y in this equation. That will give you your simpler equation, which you will then have to rearrange in order to use one of the previous methods to solve for z in terms of x. And this might be separating the variables or it might be an exact differential equation. Once you've got your solution for z in terms of x at the end, don't forget to substitute back to give y in terms of x. Don't leave it in terms of z. z is a dummy variable that's just being used to make this easier. We can't have a solution to this equation as z equals something. It must go back into a y. So we're going to do this one, and then we'll do a second example, and that will be the end of the chapter. So here's the method up here, and it's the same question. We have our expression for y. We need an expression for dy by dx. So first of all, let's differentiate this. Don't forget, we've got x and z. They both need to be differentiated, so we have to use the product rule. We differentiate x, that gives us a 1, we leave z, 
and then we differentiate z and we leave x so the x is there and if you differentiate z with respect to x you've got dz by dx so here is our expression for dy by dx we can substitute that in here and at the same time we can substitute xz for the y here and here that gives us our new equation which we're going to solve in terms of z and x so we've got z plus x dz by dx is equal to x squared plus 3 times y squared, so that's x squared, z squared, divided by 2xy, which is xz, so we've got another x there, and a z. Now take a moment to look at your equation. You need to decide if you're going to separate the variables, or if it's an exact differential equation, or if you can make it an exact differential equation. In this case, because the x squareds cancel here, we've got nothing but z's here, and I can move this z across by itself and combine it with this fraction here. We're going to have a full load of z's on this side and an x on this side. I think we can separate the variables here. So let's try this. Let's get rid of those first. And that will give us 1 plus 3z squared over 2z. Let's bring the z over here as well. So that's minus z. And in order to combine these, I'll make that 2z squared over 2z so they can become one fraction and on the left we've got this so making a single fraction here gives us 1 plus z squared over 2z and you can see now for sure that we can separate our variables using nothing but multiplication and division which is what we need so i'm going to multiply 2z over here divide 1 plus z over here divide dx multiply by the dx and all of that rearranging will give 2z over 1 plus z squared dz is equal to 1 over x dx. Now I can integrate both sides and I look at this and I'm quite happy because we can see here a function underneath its own derivative. It doesn't even need to be modified. It is in that form already. So that becomes the natural log of 1 plus z squared. And on the right we have the natural log of x. And in order to make this easy when I simplify, I will, instead of putting plus c, put plus the natural log of a, where c equals the natural log of a. And that's easier because I can combine these into a single log in order to get rid of the logs in the next step. Bring the one over. And we have our solution and I want square roots because what I want to do first is substitute back out the z for y. Obviously, in order to do that, I will have some x's in here as well, because if we rearrange this, z is equal to y over x. So z squared on the left of my equation becomes y squared over x squared equals ax minus 1. So my final answer would probably be y squared equals x squared ax minus 1. And this is the solution to the original equation in y and x. Second and final example, we have got the substitution z equals 1 over y to solve the equation this. One of the interesting things to note about this example is that we still need dy by dx and there are no x's in here. But don't let that worry you. You can still differentiate with respect to x, even though there are no x's. So first of all, I need y. So y is equal to 1 over z. Simple rearranging there. Now I need dy by dx. I write that in index form. The derivative of this with respect to x, I differentiate with respect to z to give me minus z to the minus 2. And then I have to multiply by dz by dx, making use of the chain rule. Now I have the expression for y and dy by dx. I substitute those both into this expression to get my new equation in z and x, which gives us minus z to the minus 2 dz by dx, plus y is 1 over z, and that's over x, so that's 1 over xz is equal to y squared. So that's 1 over z squared. 
Now a quick look at this tells me I probably won't be able to separate all of the variables, but it's very close to the dz by dx plus pz equals q form. So if I multiply everything by minus z to the power 2, I'll see what I get. And that is dz by dx minus z over x is equal to minus 1. And here we can see the p function is minus 1 over x. So now I need an integrating factor, e to the integral minus 1 over x dx, and we've done this one before, we get e to the minus log of x, which is e to the log of x minus 1, which is just x minus 1. So I'm going to multiply all of the terms in this expression by 1 over x, which gives me 1 over x dz by dx minus z over x squared equals minus 1 over x. A quick check to make sure this is okay, z differentiates to dz by dx, and 1 over x differentiates to minus 1 over x squared. Yes, that's okay. So the left-hand side can be rewritten as the derivative with respect to x of z over x. The right-hand side is still minus 1 over x. Integrate both with respect to x, and we get z over x is equal to minus log of x plus our constant of integration. Put it in terms of x, we get z is equal to minus x log x plus cx, and now substitute back to give our final result here in red. z is equal to 1 over y, So when I rearrange, we get y is equal to 1 over, and then I would normally write the negative term second, cx minus x log x. And here is our final general solution to this equation. So there are quite a lot of steps there. First, you have to work with the substitution, and you might be required to use your chain rule or your product rule to do this. Then you substitute it in and you have to do a little bit of thinking to see what you're going to do next, whether it's separating the variables or putting it into exact DE form, with a possible integrating factor to help you do that, then the integration, and finally substituting back in the Y to give a final answer. Final summary before you do the questions, we've got separating variables, an exact differential equation where you can use the product rule in reverse, this form which can be made into an exact differential equation using an integrating factor, and finally reducing an equation to make it easier using a given substitution. Don't forget to change it back to the original variable at the end. And that should be enough now for you to have a go at the remaining questions, exercise 5c, and the chapter 5 review exercise. Maybe I'll see you for second order differential equations in chapter 6.